How to use Jira for full project management, full beginner's tutorial 2023. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. So I'm gonna be taking you through all the steps and features that come with Jira, and I'm gonna be explaining it in great depth. So just watch this video till the end to take all the information in. So without further ado, let's get started with our guide. So you're gonna go to Google and write Jira Project Management. Now, once you write Jira project management, you're not going to see any URL which gives you a Jira uh, look because Jira is basically a creation by the company called Atlassian. So when you go on Atlassian.com, you're going to see Jira issue and project tracking software. So you're going to come here and uh, you can look through their main uh, mainframe where it says Jira software move fast, stay aligned, and build better together. So basically, this is their big project management software, and people compare it to uh, a lot of alternate competitors like you know ClickUp, Monday.com, Zoho, Trello, and you know much, much more, like these teamwork, Microsoft-looking uh, project management softwares. So this is compared to a lot of them, but in my opinion, this is the number one software development tool and it's mostly used by agile teams like the whole uh, workload and the whole uh, overview, if I'm not wrong, is uh, for agile team and agile workspaces. So we're going to be getting into all that and I'm going to be discussing the all the details and we're gonna be discussing all the different, uh, let's say templates, like they have the Scrum, Kanban, bug tracking, DevOps, and much, much more. You can see all the different integrations that the Alasian Market Space brings you, like uh, Slack, you have uh, the Amazon, you have um, Microsoft Teams, and much, much more. So the developers also focus on code mainly, like you don't have to do anything related to code, everything happens using the main Jira developers. And you can also see why Jira is the number one tool recommended by all the Agile teams out there. You can build for teams for like range from people from one to 20,000 people, which is crazy. And you can like before starting, you can also go ahead and check all the features that the Jira software brings you. Like if you go in features, you can see manage your full work powerful with agile boards. Like here's the scrum template, scrum boards help agile teams break large complex projects into manageable pieces of work. So focus teams working in sprints ship faster. And this is basically the scrum interface. Here's the to do page, the in progress page, the in review, and here's the done. So basically, you're gonna make projects and drag them over here to, you know, make it easier for yourself. And then obviously, this is the Kanban board, where flexible Kanban boards help teams visualize their workflow, limit work in progress, and maximize efficiency as a team. Commonly used by Agile and DevOps teams to drive continuous delivery and improvement. Get started quickly with a template and customize it as you go. Now, before getting into the main uh, project management interface, basically, let me give you a short overview of what Jira is and how it actually works. Basically, Jira has been a top choice for software development teams for a long, long time. Meanwhile, a universe of non-developer teams have looked to general use PM softwares like ClickUp, Smartsheet, and Rike for a less technical UX. Atlassian's response to these plans as the market for general team and project management platforms matures is Jira work and project management software. So the whole methodology that goes with Jira is the basic sample project that you build in these tools is uh, like it goes from three month applications to maybe a month or maybe weeks. It all depends on you. But yeah, you can work around with a lot of things in Jira. So if we were to discuss in great depth of what Jira is and what it actually does, Jira is the flagship software and project management platform developed by the Atlassian people. And basically, it was released in 2002, if I'm not mistaken. The core product, Jira Software, offers developer tools to plan, track, release, and report in the software development cycle. Almost 20 years later, Atlassian announced the addition of Jira work management to the Jira family of applications in 2021. Like, these are all the products that uh, they bring you. There's Jira Software, Jira Service Management, and much, much more. So... 
Basically, through a collaborative program, Gyro Work Management offers teams across industries the capabilities the vendor built for developer and ID services teams. So basically the overview is that it's available as a free trial, free plan for teams under 10 users or premium SAAS subscriptions. Teams can access this platform through the company's website or you know you can use mobile applications for iOS and Android devices through the Apple and Google Play stores. And you can see that all Jira apps are available through the Jira cloud which is given to you by Atlassian. So to start with the Atlassian website, from the Jira homepage or mobile app, new users can input their business email and full name to trigger a verification email. So let me just show you that right now. Let me log out from this account of mine. I'm just gonna log out to show you the main look of how the signup process actually looks like. So let me just log out real quick. And once I have logged out, we're going to see the main page that everyone's going to see. Every new user is going to be seeing this page. And you basically put in a business email and your full name to trigger a verification email. And for that, we're obviously going to go on Get It For Free, the Jira software. Once you do Get It For Free, over here, it says uh, you selected Jira software, the project and issue tracking. But we basically here it says our cloud products work even better together select a second product now you can use confluence which is a document collaboration or the Jira service management which empower dev and ops teams to collaborate at high velocity so they can respond to business changes you can get them if you want to but i just don't recommend them i recommend you go solo with the Jira software now once you go solo with the Jira software what you're going to do is you're going to put in your work email that you use at work or with whatever teams you're working around. Now I'm going to be using a temporary email, but please do make sure that you use your proper work email. So let me just copy this and use my temp email and paste it here. And once you paste it, what's going to happen is they're just going to ask you to agree. So it's taking longer than expected to get you started. Please check your inbox to see if the order has completed successfully. Now, if you don't get the email, then obviously the order has not been completed successfully. So what we're going to want to do is you can either uh, use a different email of yours or you can just, you know, maybe just wait it out. So what you're going to do uh, or what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to use a totally new email. And once I do that, I'm again, click on agree. And once I click on agree, what's going to happen is they're going to load me up into the checkmail page. And over here, they're going to send me a verification email. I'm just going to wait for it to send it. And I'm just going to wait for it to load up really quick. And here we go. Here is a verification email from Alasian. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to verify it myself. Now, once you are properly verified, it asks you to enter your full name and your password. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. There you go. You're going to enter your full name and make sure your password is extremely strong because they don't like a weak password. And then just click on sign up and get straight into the Outlasian account. So once you've done all of this, it's going to ask you to sign in one last time. So here it says your site. Now, basically, you're going to create a domain name for yourself. So you can go with anything. I'm just going to go with this random name for now. Once you do that, you're going to click on agree. And once you click on agree, what's going to happen is it's going to redirect you to the main Jira page. So we're just going to wait for it to load us up. So here we are here. They say, tell us a bit about yourself. This helps us personalize your experience. What type of team do you work in? Now, obviously, you can either skip this question, but I just recommend you do uh, fill it in because according to this, what it does is Jira optimizes your whole workspace according to this. So you could be either in software development, HR, customer service, marketing, or any other. I'm going to go with software development. What's your role? Now, you could be the software engineer. You could be the project manager, development manager, product manager. I'm going to go with software engineer for now. What are your main tasks? So this is a multiple choice. You can choose all of these if you want to. So it could be, let's say, security and data management, designing, improving workflows, code writing, project planning. Or you can just choose all of them if you want to. I'm going to choose a few of them. Click next. And once you choose all those options, according to the choices you picked, Jira is going to optimize your website now. Now, here we are. 
So help us set up your Jira. Recommend a project. So I am new to Jira or I am experienced. You're just gonna go with I am new to. So I am setting up Jira for, it could either be a software team or a business team. It depends on you. I'm gonna go with software right now. My team is new to agile methodologies. We spend our time working on, uh, let's go on support and operations. We have a dash schedule to finish our work. You can do tight or flexible depending on whatever your schedule is. Once you do that, you're gonna click on next. Again, it's gonna optimize according to it. And then you're gonna create a project. You can change these details anytime in your project settings later if you want to, but uh, for now, let's just keep a good name like new software project. Now, once you put that in, uh, you're gonna choose the template you want. Now, it can either be the Scrum template or you can use the Kanban template. Uh, if you're a beginner, I just recommend using the Scrum template because it's just much better and easier. And the project type could be Microsoft Teams managed or it could be company managed and only administrators can do this. For now, I just recommend team managed. Uh, here is your private key, which is a descriptive prefix for your project's issue keys to recognize work from this project. And just keep it to yourself. Don't share it with anyone. Share it with only your trusted maybe uh, work people. So here they're gonna ask you to select some tools now and we'll help you connect them later. So you can use, uh, you can, you know, integrate them. So I'm gonna go with Slack. I'm gonna go with Google Sheets. And I'm gonna go with Microsoft Teams and Zendesk. And once I do that, I'm gonna click on next. And uh, it's not gonna integrate it right away, but it is gonna keep on recommending the integrations later if you want to integrate it. So now you're properly set it up and signed in to your Jira project management account. And this is where you're gonna start doing everything you have. So you can take the tour with them, but uh, I just recommend exploring by yourself. It's much better. Now this you're on right now is obviously a free trial and it will only last for like, I think if I'm not mistaken, a month at max, I think. So this is your backlog and this is your main roadmap or this, you could call this your basic calendar. And over here, you're gonna have uh, all your work. You can set the time period with months to weeks to quarters, whatever you like. So I'm just gonna keep it to months right now. And so as the software developer, you can also get into code. So basically get visibility into your team's work from issue to code. You can issue different codes or you can just connect it to other providers or maybe your Bitbucket, your GitLab or something like that. It depends on you and depends on the type of integration you're doing. So for now, let's just go on the three different things to view your project. So here is your project board, which is your scrum template. So first of all, what you're gonna do is obviously you're gonna create something. Now to create something, what you can do is you're gonna go to maybe your roadmap or you can just come up here and click on create. And once you click on create, you're gonna choose the project you wanna create in. The issue type could be a task, a bug, an epic task or something like that. Now over here, obviously, let's say I'm gonna choose the issue type as story. The status could be in progress or it could be done or it could be to do for your work people. You can give a summary of what the project is like this is the project Mr. Daniel recommended us to do. So please finish it in time and just make sure to not have any spelling mistakes. Okay, then you can give a good description to the topic and you can maybe uh, bold a text, make it bold. Then uh, you can make some text italicized and much, much more. You get what I mean. They just mess around with a summary and uh, make it look as you know attractive and well as you can. Then obviously you're gonna assign it to people that are gonna be in your management. Now, I don't have anyone right now and I'm just gonna show you in like a few moments and how you can invite other people to your work board. You can choose labels, you can select sprints in your project, like your project sprint one, project sprint two and more. You can add different attachments to guide someone and once you do that, you're just gonna click on create and what this is gonna do is it's gonna create and match your projects. So it says your issue NSP1 has been created, but it is not currently visible because it does not match your project. So whenever something like that comes up, you're just gonna go to maybe your project page and uh, you're just gonna fix things from here. So here it says project pages, capture your team's knowledge and improve the way you get more work done. So you can try the template if you want. 
And once you try the template, what's going to happen is here you're going to make your different project pages and you can make more than one. So here it says you're on the free plan, free for up to 10 users, unlimited spaces and pages, and you can upgrade any time. Now do know this, that uh, the free trial will only last a few moments. And what we're doing right now is we're using the Confluence platform or the Confluence software that Jira provides us with. And what this does is they basically create a template for our pages. So it's not necessary to do, uh, but you can do it if you want to. So if you go on your work here, you can see if any work has been assigned to you. You can make filters to different uh, projects and much, much more. But yeah, this was just a short overview of what Jira actually is and what it can actually do. But let's get into the more technicalities of Jira. So uh, to get into the technicalities, I need to show you the different works people do. So if we go on Jira review, there are many articles that you can check out if you want to. So let's go to this one. Now, this person has probably shared a lot of things about Jira. So if you were to go and compare his things to we have done now here, you can see this user has basically built a project in the tool and it's a three month application development timeline with six sprints and over 20 core tasks. This is the sample project. Here's the figure. The column listed includes task names, start and end dates, assigned contacts, status, durations, completion percentage, and notes. Meanwhile, rows organize sprint tasks and subtasks into sprints. Two springs uh, contain multiple subtasks and to add additional context, the user familiarized himself with the products, documentation, demos, industry reviews, recognition, and a comparative analysis with alternative software applications. This user ran the free trial of the business plan to test this tool. Now, obviously this tool that you see in front of you, you can't exactly do that on the free trial, like this whole thing this whole graph that he's made. I'm gonna show you the way the user has created this graph. For that, you're gonna to need to go to your project. And once you go to your project, what you're gonna do is obviously you're gonna start adding boards. And uh, what you can do is obviously go to backlog. You're gonna start yourself a sprint. Now, this is your sprint. Uh, you're gonna put settings up to it. Keep uh, a duration like four weeks, start time, end time. Sprint goal is to create as many, let's say, codes for the client as possible. This is just something random I'm putting in. And then you're gonna click on start. Now, once you've started a sprint, what's gonna do is here's the to-do issue and you're going to start adding more things to this. Like you can add flags like, oh, it's really uh, important. You can start adding labels and the label could be, let's say, important. Important is you can create that as a label and you're just going to do that. And look at that. That just says that it's very important. And then once someone is done, they can put it in progress or they can put it in done. And you can just create more sprints from that if you want to. And just to create more sprints, you can just come down here, create more sprints. And in those sprints, you can just start creating issues like uh, please make better codes or uh, like, um, please maintain work ethic. Please uh, fulfill the uh, submission on time. And you can just add these things. And once you've done adding them, you can edit them if you want to, like uh, top of backlog, bottom of backlog. You can do things like that. And you can make them like basically if this is in progress, this is in progress, something is done and you want to do more out of it, something like that. And come down here and you can create more sprints if you want to. Like let's say uh, you can drag and drop a sprint or plan a sprint by dragging the sprint footer down uh, below some issues or dragging the issue over here. So let's say you want this issue to come down here and we're going to confirm that. And yeah, there we go. We have two sprints now and just start the sprint. You're going to keep the same date and everything. Uh, make a sprint goal. You're going to click on start. And once you click on start, here you go. You have two sprints now and you can just check both of them by doing this. And you have two sprints over here. So please make better codes. Here are two spins all together. Please full submission on time and stuff like that. Now let's say I only want to look for the second sprint. I'm gonna put it in to do. 
do that and look at that here are different sprints and to see the number of those sprints you can just check these like this is the nsp sprint one here's the second one here's the third here's the fourth and you can check much much more now again as i told you to make it look like this you're going to need to have their business plan and pricing like i'm going to get into the plans and pricings at the end of this video to discuss right now what my goal is to just discuss the main things about gyra so Another thing that you can do on Jira is basically, again, this is just your main uh, scrum board that you see in front of you. And you can, uh, once someone has completed the sprint, you can just click on complete sprint. And what complete sprint does is it just tells your work clients that yes, the sprint has been completed. You are done with everything, congratulations. And what that will do is like you've added someone I will just give them a notification that yes, it's done. You can also add sprints on the roadmap by coming here. Once you come here, you can add something like um, do work as quick as you can. They're obviously not sprints, but uh, you get what I mean. As you can, once you do that, click on enter. And obviously you can set it, like set the duration of it when you want it. So just click on it and make a good duration of it. So to set the duration, you can go here and you can make it either to do progress, change the durations if you want to. Uh, you can change its details to its uh, pin to, give it different attachments. Like let's say I'm gonna put this picture to it. So this is just a random picture, but uh, you can keep a picture which is obviously familiar to what the work actually is. So when a user basically, let's uh, take the user to the backlog. Now, once the user goes to the backlog or maybe the board, What's going to happen is they're going to see the sprint and uh, what needs to be done in this sprint is do work quickly, please. I'm just going to write that and you can just keep adding more small tasks to it. And uh, yeah, that's basically how you can do these things. You can also make uh, some work epic. What epic does is it just makes it much more important in the board and much, much more. So to give you more insight of this, you can also go into project settings and you can change the details of your project. Like let's say new software project, you can change that to let's say coding for Mr. Daniel. You can keep it to that. You can change the key if you want to choose a category for your work. So you can choose making categories on different pages. For that, you're gonna have to leave the page. So don't make sure not to do that. You can default yourself as the project lead if you are, because obviously once you're the project lead, no one can change the settings other than you. Uh, here you can give access uh, to add other people, just go on access. And once you go on access over here, you're gonna click on add people. Once you go on add people over here, you can start writing email addresses. Like for example, I'm gonna send a friend of mine an invite to, let's say this and you're gonna click on select invite and you can give them roles. Like obviously uh, the roles aren't editable on the free plan, just know this. So if you bring them in on the free plan, they can do anything to your project, so just know this. So once you click on add, what's gonna happen is you've added this user to your project. You'll see them on the board once they have been assigned an issue. So if I were to, let's say, go on my Gmail right now, and check my Gmail, I'm gonna see an email from this uh, board over here. So let's see, look at that. So in the email, they say, John Leahy has invited you collaborate. So the user, all they'll need to do is just, they're gonna click on join the team and they're just gonna need to create an account and they're gonna automatically join into your main board over here. So yeah. Then if we were to go in notifications here, we can see that uh, all the different notifications you get from maybe your integrations or your email and much, much more. Here's your automation tab. And in your automation tab is obviously how you automate maybe your emails or your work line tasks and how you integrate it with other users. They have simple automation rules like uh, when all stories are completed, then close Epic. When Epic is completed, close all stories. When an issue is transitioned, then automatically assign and much, much more. Here are different optimi uh, or automations that come with the Jira software. Like uh, it goes from Jira to Jira, Jira to uh, their conversion software, Jira to Slack. And then they have uh, other things as well, like Jira to Git Master, Jira to GitHub, 
and much, much more. So you can use these automations to make life easier for you and you know, to automate your emails or maybe automate your workspaces. Uh, then you're gonna come here where you can set your, uh, let's say, a template or you can mess around with the settings of your gyro work management software to you know make it look more presentable, make it look nicer. And it just comes with a workflow just to you know make it look much more presentable. So you can add dates, you can add paragraphs, like the person to enter field names, dates, and much, much more. And obviously you can change different context fields you can uh, you know change requirements for these content fields and much much more then you can go from bug to story and obviously you can add more things over here and uh, you know just respectively do more of these things then you're gonna come to features and in features you can see different features that gyra provides you with so first of all there's the roadmap feature that we just saw on our presentation that roadmap is like a calendar then there's the backlog feature and then there's finally the board feature so the board feature is your basic scrum or kanban template we just activated uh, the scrum as you saw then there is the reports feature which analyzes and tracks your teamwork by reporting on the project's activity you can turn this on if you're like a very hard work freak and then there's the issue navigator where you can navigate issues then there are sprints obviously the complete work in a fixed unit of times requires a backlog then there's the estimation graph that you can use. There's code where you can connect Bitbucket, GitHub, and other development tools to link your team's repositories to Jira, as I just showed you. Then there's releases, which is uh, versions help you package and schedule project deliveries. Then there's operations, which are deployments which track and visualize your deployment information in Jira. Then there's the on-call feature where you can view on-call schedules in your project and it requires ops Jenny by Atlassian. And then there's more items like project pages where you can create, share, and collaborate all your project docs in one place. This does require a confluence by Atlassian, but that obviously totally depends on you. Then comes the board section where uh, you have different columns and statuses and you can you know basically change the position and uh, you can change how they look, change their colors, manage your workflows and much much more. You can set custom filters to your boards or to your gyro management software just to make it look much nicer and much better like change your name, maybe description, filter queries and much much more. Here are your card cover images, basically your work cards that you have on your project filters. You can change these to, I don't know, this, this could maybe, you know, make your project look more fun or more presentable, something like that. Then there's the roadmap where you can configure the roadmap view for your team. And you can do that by the right hand side uh, ribbon over here. And there's the insights where you have board insight settings. These things are like, I wouldn't recommend messing with these settings, like in the bottom, you know, the bottom three, I just wouldn't recommend because they're all obviously the best that you can get right now. Now here are the tool chain tools. This is a beta option. Welcome to our project tool chain. Discover integrations for your tools, connect work to your projects and manage it all right here. And you can obviously add tools or code repositories to make life easier for you. So let's say you want to add a tool of integration, like add something for, I don't know, maybe idea management. So you can use all these different tools for your management, or maybe let's say for, uh, you want to test your management for testing. You can use all these different tools and integrate them with your main, uh, Jira project management board. So yeah, these are all the, uh, let's say uh, settings of your management tool and this is what you can mess around with so basically the gyra work management interface guides the users through a quick start guide as i just showed you to see how the project starts list it's quick and useful but there are a few bugs that prevent you from completing a step in the onboarding after the dismissing menu like you are free to free to explore but before it will give you a bit of bugs so just bear with that now, as I just showed you, the management features and capabilities that this brings you, uh, like after parsing through, you can see that nearly every platform page in pertinent documentation, you will struggle to find where to import your existing project tasks because it isn't the greatest at that. But 
to save any, you know, to save all you uh, watchers the pain, you can import existing project data by clicking either the plus icon on the top banner and selecting import issues. And to do that, you can either go on roadmap or a backlog and you can just import it from here. Or what you can do is the gear icon to open settings. Here's the gear icon. You can open settings and select system. Here's system under the gyro settings. Scroll down and select external system import. So over here somewhere you're going to find external system export. So wherever you find it from there, you're going to import in your external system or your external projects and what that will do here we go external system import and once you click on this what this is going to do is you can import maybe from your Trello or your JavaScript on or maybe your Jira server or a CSV that you have so these are the things that you can use to you know uh, import it to the Jira's field parameters and the field matching step includes an extensive range of built-in field values and the option to create a field for any field types misses to ensure data makes it onto the platform. Uh, at least this is what happens on maybe your first or second attempt. Like maybe through a half a dozen tries at the import process, you won't have any options to move next on few occasions, which will force a restart of the project. But do remember this that it is a handy preview and you can go like it might mess around with you in the start but do trust me that you can easily import it when you want it to so once the gyra completes your import with the resulting list view unfortunately one issue is the import engine will fail to recognize the field like task status assignee and the start and end dates that those are some of the cons like let's say uh, you have a trello board and you import it it will fail to recognize the task status and much more. So with an already small number of fields needed, this process and the manual effort required to after reconcile missing data will be a bit time consuming for you. So obviously we see the collaboration across different project views. Like while the default view in Jira's Kanban style board, all issues will sit in the to-do lane. Like let me just show you the to-do. Uh, if we were to go on our board, yeah, this is the to do. So basically, all issues will be in your to do lane, like if they don't have a status yet for spreadsheet users, basically, the list view is more convenient for adjusting issue data. Like after your import experience, a chunk of your time will be required to reconcile your initial project data and what appeared in your import results. So basically, the list view breaks down the project data into rows for tasks and columns to define field value. Like the users can drag and drop rows vertically or columns horizontally, add columns or subtasks and open task details. Like if you go on roadmap, you can do all of that. Regrettably, one thing that you're going to be unable to do is to select multiple tasks to perform group operations. So like you can do just do that and do multiple operations with them. But uh, you are going to land on the issues page where which allows for bulk actions to edit, move, transition or watch issues in a four step bulk operation engine, though it will be better than no group operation option. The format is a bit outdated right now and they are working on its updates and everything. So from the link featured in the key column, teams can open any task detail like this NSP, the key that we have. The in platform window includes the task name description files and comments with options to basically add a subtask. So let's say if we were to go here, so this you see in front of you, this is basically look at that it includes task name, description files, comments with options to add subline tasks and everything. So you can uh, like as you can see in this example i've attached the onboarding file to the issue as well as comments to reiterate the reading the guide upon opening the bottom right more fields and uh, users can also open an additional window to configure time tracking so basically while every pm software or project management software offers a detailed view of task data the built-in time tracker is unique and very accessible so you can use that like there are also different time trackers like uh, clockify or something like that but uh, you can also use gyra's very own clock 
Now back to the developer friendly board view project tasks are now split into three lanes. So we're going to go to the board and yeah, we can see the project tasks are now split into three lanes to do in progress and done based on modifications to task status made in list view. Like other Kanban board tools or maybe scrum tools, Jira allows users to drag and drop cards horizontally between lanes, as I just showed you previously and vertically within lanes. Teams can also filter their view by assignee, issue type, label, or priority, create new cards, and open task details with a click of a card. From the more menu in the top right, like if you were to find it, the more menu, basically what it does is you just can customize card views to only display pertinent details, but I would have liked the option to, you know, create a new column maybe. So uh, calendar and timeline views also, you know, task over time, basically for teams and users who appreciate seeing tasks against time in a project, the calendar and timeline views offers just that. I appreciate like the whole calendar view they gave us in the roadmap, like if I were to open the roadmap, like I appreciate this whole calendar view, like which shows the full length of tasks rather than the individual start and end dates. However, an option to export or import from a third party right over here would have been better, but you can import it in the way I just showed you through the settings. Then obviously there's this whole, you know, calendar timeline view, which similarly offers users the chance to select, open and modify task details on a time scale but also includes the options to view the timeline by weeks, months, or quarters, as you can see to write down here. Upon hovering over tasks, like over here, you can see that the users or us can click and drag a line between tasks. So let's say uh, if we were to, you know, create tasks over here, I'm going to create more tasks, create as many tasks as you can. Once you do all that, you can create lines against these tasks and, you know, hover them, help with visual deficiencies and much more. So here is also something like, let's say you want to bring it here. You want to bring this task over here and you want to bring this task over here that bring this one here, bring this one here, this one here and this one here. So that is what you can do as well. So both calendar and timeline view also allows user to drag and drop tasks along the calendar or time scale to adjust. So let's say I want to bring this here or I want to bring this here. So yeah, you get the point. Then there's the automation and reduced effort and simplified workflows from the platform settings. As I showed you a few minutes earlier, you can create view and modify automations for project workflows. Now, as I showed you previously, Jira's automation engines do offer a few sensible examples of automations for any project and users that can explore hundreds more automation rule templates. So the other Jira features are basically forms that you can check from, you know, obviously the settings over here. There are forms that customize and collect survey data or you know, you can find those up here in the apps or more like that. And you can use those in your project management to, you know, obviously fill in forms through the forms tool. Users can create service that will import directly to issue fields. These forms help teams quickly collect responses from across the company in the Jira platform compared to basically, let's say the other Jira tools or other project management tools, I found Jira's form builder quite simple. Besides enabling project fields as prompts, there's little else one can do to configure and brand the form for release, which basically could either be freeing or restricting based on the company's commitment to white labeling internal or external forms. So the templates, as you can see, start the project really fast, like the Kanban or Scrum template. Like Jira work management offers over 20 templates for teams across design, finance, human resources, legal and marketing fields. So you can also check their use cases in uh, the like main Jira website and the project settings gateway. Like basically if you come here and uh, you like go on the icon labeled project Jira settings. Here on the bottom left of the Jira work management opens a list of long actions you can do or options that you can configure. Like you have uh, project details, people and automations, and you also have much more. Like again, if you go up here, here's your project settings. 
and yeah over here you can manage your products your project categories if you have any you can create different things in your project uh, you can add different categories you have different versions and components of the project roles permissions and basically your notification policies issue collectors for connecting websites basically if you have any and basically integrating slack and channel notifications so access to and understanding these platform features will be essential to making the most of team use it that said the learning curve for first time gyro users is evident like while confidence of other project management platforms vary somewhat Gyro work management's use of developer jargon will be intimidating for non-software development project managers, basically. So there's also the whole summary page that you're going to get once your sprints are completed. Because atop the platform menu is the summary page for an overview of project data by task status, priority, workload, and related projects. Clicking on the first four widgets opens the select tasks filtered and list view. But obviously there's little more one can do here so like if we were to go on our roadmap or maybe our board with our project manager and we had a lot of let's say uh work over here like let's say i'm gonna go on my board and we have a lot of work uh, we would have a summary tab up here and we could use that to use it to ourselves, basically so basically as an advantage like the atlasian advantage you're going to get is that the atlasian portfolio goes much farther than the gyro work management with a family of gyro applications as well as products so the collaboration of gyro with other atlasian uh products are like trello or confluence the code management uh integrations is with bitbucket source tree bamboo fisheye and crucible and the identity and security obviously goes with the Atlassian access and crowd. So due to the wide array of Atlassian products that can be used with tech and non-developer teams of many types, companies that already use many of these products may find that they have access to better connectivity and a more seamless experience when integrating with these tools. So the Jira family, like it's no surprise to see that Atlassian build out of its flagship products capabilities for a growing number of IT professionals teams and businesses that can also basically benefit from this project management platform beyond the core platform for software development and agile teams gyro software and the addition of work management the suite also includes this basic gyro software or service management your capture for gyro status page gyro align and much much more so if you were to talk about the whole gyro work management use cases and audiences like while Jira software may present some initial onboarding difficulties for, you know, the non software development teams, Jira work management opens the door to a multitude of teams across the industries, as you can see. And basically in all the Jira family of applications serves more than a hundred thousand customers worldwide from startups and small businesses to enterprise organization. Notable clients of Jira include Airbnb, Cisco, Dropbox, eBay, Spotify, and Square. Like, how huge are these names in the work world? The use cases for Jira are bug tracking and issue management, campaign and content management, general project management, go-to-market launch, lead tracking and sales pipeline, new employee onboarding and recruitment, and performance review system, like you can easily do performance reviews, policy and procedure management, and much, much more. And the types of teams for Jira family applications, like the best types, are obviously if you're in finance, HR, incident response, uh, information technology, legal firms, marketing and sales, operation and logistics, and software development, obviously. So yeah, that's basically, you could say the guide that comes behind Jira and like the main overview of it. If I were to discuss the pros and cons of Jira work management, here are like the advantages and benefits to working with it. Like Jira has a very familiar interface and terminology for the software team and users. And obviously because it has Scrum and Kanban, which work amazing, there's robust documentation for learning the platform and tools. And they also have great guides and built-in time tracking tools for estimating and logging effort against tasks. They have over 500 integrations and 3000 extensions to connect workflow between apps and automate yourself. 
and they bundle with Atlassian's portfolio of tools like Big Bucket, Crucible, and uh, basically Trello. Now, if we were to talk about the disadvantages that you're going to see or the cons you're going to see with Jira, is that newer general use project management solutions still developing for Jira software base. Import process is pretty difficult. The higher learning curve for non-software development teams for various features, not as intuitive as competing top project management solutions. There's the occasional lagging when moving pages and times like sometimes and some annual plans aren't worth the cost. Like if we were to go to Jira's pricings, let's go and see Jira's pricings. Let's discuss the whole pricing dynamic, you know? So if we go to the Jira pricing, here's the monthly and annual subscription offer. So here you can see that obviously they have uh, four offers. There's the free offer, which is always free for 10 users. Standard offer, which is $7.75. They have the premium offer, which is $15 uh, per user average, or it like per user it's $15, or it could be, you know, $152 a month. And then there's obviously the enterprise plan, which you have to contact them to discuss the money. But yeah, down here you can see all the features with every single plan and there are pretty good features, but yeah, sometimes the annual plans aren't worth the cost in my opinion. So I will say this, that Jira does have a lot of room to grow, like tenured project management platform with extensive integrations and use cases. Top choice for software development teams with a new option for general project management functionality, less ideal for non-developer users and teams relative to, you know, leading project management solutions. Now, while Jira does remain one of the top choices for software development, its younger sibling, Jira Work Management, still has room to grow. When considered alone for non-software development teams, I found Jira's general PM software to be underwhelming related to other top PM platforms. But I'd still recommend you using it because it's not the worst and uh, it, it works great. Like in my opinion, you will face a lot of bugs, but according to this guide, if you follow me properly, you're gonna be fine. So while uh, basically the Cavet of Jira work management is also the least expensive subscription. That's one great thing about it. Like with other project management softwares you're gonna see out there, you're gonna see like very expensive subscriptions. But this is the least expensive and it's with a solid fee plan and a monthly subscription of basically five or less for personnel, Jira might be the most affordable for its value. Like unlike some competitors, Alasian does offer great discounts. So as a newer, project management solution, uh, Jira management will continue to develop its functionality and UX for general teams. So yeah, that's my take on the whole Jira situation. And uh, yeah, that's basically what I think about the whole Jira project management software. So yeah, that's basically all for today. I hope this video was helpful and very informational to you. If it was, please make sure to drop down a like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out a lot. And uh, if you can, please do share this video with other friends of yours, like if they're in need of a tutorial like this. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please let me know down as well because I will make more for you if you want it. And if you have any queries or issues related or questions related to this video, please let me know that as well and I will answer you as soon as I can. But yeah, that was all from me. This was the full guide or full beginner's guide for Ajira project management software. I hope you all keep having a great and spectacular day. That was all from me and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.